my name is Beth Hiley here for Board Game Geek, and we are featuring here at Comic-Con at Home. I am joined by Ross Thompson from the OP, and you also have another guest to introduce as well. Yes, we're joined by uh, Nate Heist, the designer of Harry Potter House Cup Competition. Hello, everybody. It's nice to meet you. Now, you, you guys, this is a brand new title for the OP, so I'm really excited that we're going to have uh, both publisher and designer uh, here on camera to uh, give us a quick walkthrough. But I think, Nate, you're probably going to uh, take it away on this one. Yeah, um, here we got uh, Harry Potter House Cup competition. It's a game I'm really excited about. I've been waiting for this to uh, see the light of day for, for quite, a, quite a bit. And uh, it's the first uh, worker placement game uh, in the Harry Potter universe. Uh, so if, if you know board games, uh, especially like Euro style games, you probably know about worker placement games, uh, but they're, they're one of my favorite styles of games. And I, I'm really happy to get a chance to sort of mix that up with the Harry Potter universe. Now, and I can see that Nikki is grabbing it right now. This does have a remarkable 3D component of sort of the, the tracker, the hourglasses for the different House Cups awards, uh, which she's tilting nicely so people can see how vertical it is. Yeah, those are uh, actually the way that you track the, the points. So, I mean, in this game, obviously, you're representing one of the four houses of uh, Hogwarts. And... Uh, when you score points towards the house cup, you're going to be dropping these gems into uh, your, your vials. And they make this really satisfying clink uh, that, that I'm, <laughs> I'm really happy about. Uh, and the, the idea here is that you can get a sense of who's in the lead, but you don't exactly know because things don't exactly sit quite right. So you, it, it's a bit fuzzy, so you never quite know. Which I thought was a nice interpretation of the similar feeling that I'm sure the characters would have from the books, knowing like, well, I think we've done really well, but you're not sure until you get to the end of the year slash book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I promise in this, in this game, Dumbledore doesn't come by and just grant, you know, hundreds of points to <laughs> Gryffindor at the end. Um, that, no, that I did, no I did have a, a version card. of this in playtesting where that would happen occasionally, but, you know, I guess people didn't like it, except for the Gryffindor player. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> All right, why don't you, now, since we've had a little tease that this is a worker placement game, why don't you give us a quick tour of sort of the overlap, you know, the, the, the general layout of a turn and then what we're hoping to achieve to win. Sure. Uh, so on each turn, uh, you're going to kind of go around the table uh, placing your, your students. And, uh, you know, they're, they're the students that you kind of know and love from the, the Harry Potter universe. And you can see them there on the, the house rooms. And uh, you're going to take your student and you're going to put them on a space and do the stuff on that space. And that'll be things like uh, improving their abilities in... Uh, one of the three uh, classes that they can learn, the, the Charms, Defense Against the Dark Arts. Um, and another thing you can do is get lessons and challenges uh, or acquire resources such as knowledge or magic. And on your turn, you're going to place your, your student and also uh, have the ability to complete a lesson. And you can do that either before or after you place. And the thing about the lessons are they require your, your students to have a, a certain levels uh, there. And so if you have the appropriate level, you can complete the lesson and get the rewards uh, that, they, that they have there. So those are the basic lessons you can see there. So that requires three defense, and then that would give you uh, you know, the resources that were indicated. Uh, and some of the, there's basic lessons and there's advanced lessons. The advanced lessons off, do fancier things. Um, so like this one, you can see that you get one knowledge per level of the student with the highest level. So that's, um, or for the highest defense level there. But you need uh, five levels and potions in order to complete that level, that, that lesson. So, a lot of the game is about strategizing um, the order of which you're going to place your students out because you can put each one out. Um, you know, they don't have to go in the order from top to bottom. You can place them out whichever order you want, uh, getting the, the levels that you're looking for, and then completing the lessons. Uh, 
Now at the end, after everybody's placed all of their students, because there's, you know, they're going to place three students per round, uh, then there is the time to complete the challenges. So all your students come back and then, you know, you have the, uh, the ability to complete up to two challenges, uh, a hard and easy challenge and, or two easy challenges. And Nate, let me um, pause you there because let's let's actually have Nikki like actually do sort of that worker placement part first because we have enough time oh, sure. here. We can actually show a full turn um, and then, then we can then talk a little bit about how the challenges work and then kind of go through what sort of a, the resolution of a challenge would be as well. That sounds so, great. I, I'm used to just teaching this game to people right before we play. So. <laughs> I know, I know, right? <laughs> So I, I think, Nikki, why don't you choose whatever house you feel best represents you? That would be the blue, and that does not show like, up well on class, the screen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can take your three <clears throat> students and place them in any spot that's got sort of that uh, silhouette figure on it. Yeah, so you'd, you'd take one, you'd choose which student you'd want, and then you'd place it, and then the next player would then place their student. So you wouldn't be placing all right. three at well, the same time. But, right. but yeah, uh, when, when you place it, then you uh, do whatever it says in that space there. So then we'll kind of have her, so, so let's just say there's, there's, she's, she's going through as, as if the different houses were placing one student, one student, one mm -hmm. student, one student. And then yep. maybe if Nikki, if you don't mind being on mic and telling us which one you then are retrieving once you're done with some placing, then we can just kind of go through what you would be getting in return for some of those different spaces. All right, so I'll retrieve the Hufflepuff. So all these Best guys. House. Yeah, so when you, place the, when you place the student on the space in the first place with uh, brushes, so. Like, hmm? You would take three of the, the book counters. Okay. And then when you would place place the next one, uh, which one did you place? Sorry. Well, I'm I'm backwards, so, so I would take like it. It gives you a magic. Uh, I'm having a little trouble uh, seeing it's, that. This is the hat. scroll. We've got a Advance. Scroll so she can draw one of the lessons. Yep. Okay, d only from the face up, or can I take a blind one if I wanted to? Uh, it's like one of the face up ones. Okay. I'll just take a basic. Okay. And then um, I believe that's the uh, the first turn marker there is the other thing. Ah, that you get. okay. Yeah, the first player <clears throat> marker. So uh, player order matters a lot to the strategy of this game game so people can buy over that first player marker because at the start of the round the the students that go earlier will have more options available to them because once a student's in a spot nobody else can go there and so um, two books and the ha uh, cup so yeah so that'd be two more knowledge and then the cup is a challenge card okay which is the red ones easy challenge so the, yeah easy challenge there all right Oh, you take a red one, Nikki, with the cup on it. A hard challenge. Yeah. Okay. And back to my board. Right, and so you retrieve all your students. Now, you didn't uh, go to any of the spaces that leveled up your students. So let, let, let's demonstrate what that would be. Yeah, just okay. To, you beat to show. it, Nick. <laughs> uh, so that, those, are, those are in the, uh, the classrooms is where you go to learn things. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, down there. And so if you would, uh, let's say you put one of your students um, in there, it would level up that student in that uh, particular type of thing. So uh, if it has the L, you can gain a level in whatever you want. Uh, okay. But then the first uh, three on the left there give in potions, charms, and defense against dark arts in that order from okay. top to bottom. And it's that and character those... that you place that is getting the skill in that particular class, correct? That's right. That's so right. these I so put Ravenclaw you... people and one okay, great. Slytherin. So. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Now, to, now normally they wouldn't all be placed, and and then you'd you'd get the stuff. You would just get it as you placed it. But yeah. So those little trackers there, um, 
you can move them up to denote what level uh, like Luna is at you know those three different uh, skills. And so those levels are important because that is what you use to complete the challenges. Which sounds like an excellent segue into challenges. Yes. So let's take a look at some of those challenge cards. Or, you know, just grab one, I suppose. All right. So this is a hard challenge. It's study for newts. Um, it's going to be worth 60 points if you complete it, which is, which is great. It's a lot of points. Uh, but in order to complete it, it's very difficult. It requires seven levels in potions, seven levels in defense against the dark arts, and two knowledge. And you, you can team your, your students up, is the good news, to complete these challenges. So right now, you'd be unable to complete this challenge because even if you sent all of your students to try to complete it, you know, they're, they're looking like they're level one in all these things. So you would need to get some more levels in um, potions and defense before you, you could do it. But you do have the knowledge, so you're on your way. So that could be a goal for you across, you know, a few turns. So yeah, if, if uh, you just add some levels there, well, in uh, the various students. So here, uh, it looks like you'd have three potions if you sent Cedric. And another, uh, is that five potions if you sent Zacharias? So that's good. You, if you sent both of them, you'd have your potions covered, but you need some defense as well. So you need somebody with, uh, you'd only have two defense between the two of them. So you need to find another five defense. Now, if you can't, if you don't have enough levels to uh, complete these challenges, uh, there, there are a couple options. The one option that is, of course, the, the best option to take in the Harry Potter universe is use magic. It solves all your problems. <laughs> so if you have magic tokens, uh, you can use those one for one to make up for levels that you do not have. Right? So if you're like, oh, I'm missing uh, some defense uh, levels, you can just use magic and straight, straight away make up for that. Now, the magic is expended once you use it, uh, so you'll have to go get more afterwards. Uh, the other thing you can do is you keep these challenges from turn to turn, and the game is played across, uh, or sorry, round to round, I should say, and the game is played across seven, seven rounds. So that can be a goal for you in future rounds to go and try to level up your, your students to get that additional uh, defense against the dark arts. And then why don't you give us a quick summary of kind of what that end game is going to look like after you've done these seven rounds, both placing and challenging. Yeah, so over the course of the, the seven rounds, like after, after it all happens, uh, actually along the way, you're going to be flipping up uh, additional locations to, to play at. So it, it opens up new spots. So those are those, uh, the face down uh, things there. Yep, you can just, you just flip. So that's one that's available at the beginning. And then the other ones are available as you reach those round markers across the bottom. And these are to provide variety across game to game. So not, no two games are exactly the same. And those are revealed across the course of the game and often require uh, some higher level students in order to be able to use them. And also some of them require a payment just to get there in the first place because you're sort of leaving school grounds, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah, and, and it represents like kind of like all the fun locations uh, in, in, the, in the books that, you know, the students kind of get into mischief and run around to. Uh, and I think there's, there's 18 of them. That sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, so there's quite a lot of variety from game to game. You know, you might play, you know, three or four games and never even see the same two locations. So at the, at the end of the seven rounds, uh, you're going to total up all your points and see who is the winner of the house cup. And so that's, that's kind of how the game is played. Which looks well, like it's I... Hufflepuff in the initial setup there. Which is just <laughs> so. I'm still rooting for Ravenclaw. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're close. They're close. They're Maybe it's close. settled. Yeah. Uh, 
Well, and you would also get some points, too, if any of your characters had reached the seven, the end of their track as well. You also would get a little, a little, little few points from that. Yeah, if you, if you look at the, uh, at the house board there, each, each one, uh, if, if you get it all the way to the top, uh, or, or over to the right, rather, uh, there is additional points available for those. Yeah, if you really, really met one student, excelled so much. Oh, the glory to our house. Mm -hmm. Always Hermione, right? Uh, yeah, Hermione has is, is got to be the best. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> yeah the, the, there are good reasons to uh, have a single student be really good at one thing. As you saw with that hard challenge, uh, you know, having seven levels in a particular thing can be useful, right? So... You know, maybe you'd have one student with seven and one, and another one with seven and the other, and then between the two, they could do it. So, Nikki, it's, why it's, don't you grab I like, a, an I like easy how the students can team up a... to defeat the challenges. <laughs> yeah, let's let's look at an easy challenge. Which we've, oh, I know that they're going to get a little washed out, but just so people see, you know, what what the the difference maybe between an easy and a hard would be. Yeah, one of the yeah. one of the cool things about all those challenges cards and the lesson cards too is even though it has the here's your magic ability and your knowledge ability and, and so on, it has all these different little th thematic things in there, right? So we can see like a wood that a mentor's kiss or transfigure a Bogart, make the Quidditch team, do all this little stuff. So in the game, as you're going through each round, essentially it's seven rounds, seven years of Hogwarts. So you're seeing these different things that the students will do and go on as they level up. So it's, it's, it's a nice way to kind of, as Nate has been saying, like play around in the wizarding world. Well, and I'm delighted when we have both the designer and the publisher in, in an interview together because one of my favorite questions when we're looking at a game that has a well-known IP is sort of which one came first? Was this a, a worker placement game you had rattling around in your head, Nick? Or, mm -hmm. uh, Ross, did you have like, like, oh, man, we really want to add to that Harry Potter license. Like, we really, we, could, we can get another game in there. Which one, which one was the genesis here? Well, so uh, we, we love adding to the Wizarding World on the tabletop, and we're able to do that. But Nate's been working on this game uh, for a hot minute, actually. So, uh, Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I started working on this game, like, maybe five years ago. Um, and it, it when I started, I was like, I endeavored to make a really great worker placement game. And I wanted to make a, one where the workers grew and advanced over time. I thought that would be a nice uh, spin on things. Uh, and... When I got the opportunity to uh, put, you know, Harry Potter and combine it with this, uh, I actually took the game back and I completely overhauled the whole thing uh, because <laughs> I wanted to make sure, because I had a game that, you know, was, was working well, but uh, I didn't want to just put an IP on, on a mechanic that, that existed. I wanted to take it and make sure that uh, the, the mechanics really gelled with the, the idea of the students growing over time and running around and uh, getting in all of the interesting situations that they get in in the in the books, and really hammer home that sort of competition between the houses, uh, and and you know they got to still go to class and learn their lessons and and stuff. So uh, yeah, I, I kind of I think I I did a maybe a three month redesign on it uh, when when uh, <laughs> we we started with Harry Potter. So yeah. Uh, I think it, it worked out great. Yeah, we're, we're yeah, really happy with how everything came around. And, and it's, been, it's been fun, too, because, I mean, we have a, a wide variety of games that we're able to offer from the Wizarding World from our deck building, classic games. And, and now this first venture for the op, especially this is our, one of our first worker placement games that we're doing. And then along with it being one of the first ones for, uh, for the, the hobby market. So being able to take Nate's, you know, game and now bring it to, to the market is going to be really fun. I think people are going to be excited to really kind of play around with Harry Potter in a new way. Well, let's make sure we cover a few of the uh, logistics as well. Uh, amount of players and amount of time for an average game. Nate, you want to? Yeah, uh, it's, uh, well, four houses, four players uh, maximum. Uh, minimums two, you can't have competition if it's uh, if there's not two houses. <laughs> uh, so, so that's, I guess, pretty pretty expected. Uh, and then the, the game times anywhere from 45 minutes to maybe an hour and 15, uh, depending on, you know, if you're learning or, you know, chatting and that kind of thing. Also, the number of players can affect that too. Right. 
And then to you, Ross, uh, when is this going to be available? So the game is available now. You can get it on store shelves. You can get it wherever you buy games. Um, so if you want to pick it up, you know, be sure to go shop local and, and uh, make that happen. We are super excited that it's out in the shelves. We know that, you know, how times are right now, but it is definitely available. So if you want to make it happen, uh, send an owl and, and there you go. <laughs> send an owl. Nice. <laughs> I, I, I could do Harry Potter jokes all day. <laughs> <laughs> I might take you up on that. <laughs> That's good. I mean, there's always always a good opportunity for puns. Well, Nate, now, now because having had this com project be real, it's, it has come to completion. Yeah. Is there anything that now that it's a finished product that you are particularly excited that made it into the game or like a particular element that evolved in a direction you didn't anticipate. And now you're like, Oh, that's so awesome. Like what, what is the highlight that you would say like, this is the tidbit I think I'm most excited about most proud of. Yeah. I mean, the thing that I'm, that I'm most proud of in the game is the, the sort of the way the students level and uh, the, the goals that you set as a player to try to, complete the different lessons and the different challenges and that sort of like optimization that uh, players can do around uh, you know it, it's such a simple rule set but then it it kind of uh, remixes itself and as you play and then you have all these like opportunities and interesting interactions that you might not uh, expect from the start uh, so, I'm, so I'm really happy with how that turned out uh, you know just just viscerally uh, the the points clinking into the vials is super fun and, and moving the sliders. Um, but uh, so, something that I, that I do want to call out is actually the, the box, the box itself, um, you know, has, has uh, each side of the box, there's a band around it, but then each side of the box uh, here, uh, Ross has got it going, um, has a different house. Ah. You shell, you can what house which you is, want to display. Which is pretty cool. So. <laughs> oh, man, it's like one of those online quizzes of what house do you belong in mm -hmm. distilled into the side of a board game box. Yep. Now, if you can't <laughs> decide, you can keep the band on there, and it can be that nice Harry Potter white, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I think that's a, that's a fun, extra fun That's tidbit. a really nice touch, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, Ross, I'm not sure how much you're able to share, but... Um, you know, I'm always fascinated by the process of, you know, obviously the op specializes in getting licensing deals from, from, uh, other companies. Um, you know, was this something you guys already had in discussion with Warner brothers? I mean, again, if you can't share it, that's fine, but I'm just curious if there's any details you can share. I'm like, how would you go about making a game with a name this big? I mean, that's kind of one of the things that we do, right? That's our wheelhouse, yeah. right? So it's always fun to be able to work with uh, different designers, whether it's in-house or out of house and as games come to us. And then we have a whole team where that's their job, right? And it's figuring out which IPs do we want to work with? What games work out well? When are those, like, when's the right time for it to come out due to our product line or to what IPs are hot or what's coming up down the year? You know, as, as we look forward to the future, there's a lot of cool things that are in the works with streaming and movies and comics. And so we're always kind of playing around with that. And with, with Harry Potter in particular, it's always fun to see what, what does a Harry Potter fan want to do? How do they want to engage now with the wizarding world? And over the years, we've seen that evolve from Clue yeah. to Trivial Pursuit to deck building to, you know, there's all kinds of things that are happening. And now with Harry Potter House Cup, like it's a way for like people that really want to play and get this worker placement feel. So we're always excited that we kind of get to play around with a lot of these, these bigger fandoms and be a part of the story with that, because now we are literally creating something that's going to be part of the Harry Potter fandom forever. You know, I hadn't really thought of it from that perspective that as a fan of an IP, how you might also evolve in sort of how you interact and express your fandom and how then that might affect how you create a product that would connect with that person who would be your buyer. Um, and also as those people grow up, their interests are going to change as well. Oh yeah, I could talk about that forever. Right? It's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's really neat how that all kind of functions and changes. Um, and at the end of the day, like everybody who plays games, you're a gamer, right? So it doesn't matter what kind of game you're playing, like as long as you're getting games on the table, 
Um, but I, I love that we get to do this. I think one of my favorite things with this game too is literally like the first time I played it and we finished it, I was like, oh my gosh, we have to play again now because now I've like have my, these mechanics figured out and I want to try it again. So it's been, it's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm glad that we're able to kind of finally get it out there and, and let people see it, so. Well, yeah, Nate, super exciting. thank you I'm, so much. I'm really yeah, thrilled. I, I'm thrilled for you. I'm thrilled for myself that I get to play it. <laughs> I I think that the this is this is a game that like that might bring people into uh, worker placement gaming and maybe a little more into euro gaming as well uh, and and to me that's really exciting to be kind of at the gate for for folks and have this game here and and they can say oh you know the world of you know I love Harry Potter and so I'm here for this but now I see that you know oh worker placement games those are kind of cool okay maybe maybe uh. I should I should do some more gaming. So come for the Harry Potter, stay for the worker placement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I want to thank you both so much for giving us the time to be able to take a more than quick tour of Harry Potter. Um, Nate, thank you so much for the design. Ross, thank you so much for getting this into uh, a reality. And uh, I hope people enjoy getting to play this thing you guys have created together. Thanks so much. Thank you so much.